Hello, and welcome to HSTV's Best of the Nest. My name is Don Swanson, and I teach TV production, media, um, literacy, intro to TV, video production, film, English 12, and photography and such at Armstrong High School. And this is another episode of Best of the Nest Home Edition. Students enrolled in film studies and filmmaking, commonly known as TV2, were given the vlog topic this week of what they thought their most interesting or creative assignment or project that they were given since online classes started was, and to talk a little bit about why they feel that way. Let's take a look. Today, I will be describing a couple of interesting projects I've been doing for my classwork, and there's only a couple, but here are some of the most interesting things I've been doing. Probably the most interesting thing I've been doing is honestly these vlogs. Keeping up with my day, like videotaping everything is honestly kind of fun. And this is the thing I enjoy doing the most out of all of my schoolwork. Another fun thing I've been doing is actually kind of similar. It's for Mr. Kowalczyk's um, communication systems class. I have to go on slides and do a week in my life. And I just have to put pictures of everything I've been doing and stuff, which is kind of similar to these blogs just on slides so that's been fun here i have a week in my life and then i just go through like sunday monday tuesday wednesday today's only wednesday so i only have up to here done but basically i just say like what i've been doing and like put like little clip arts and make it all pretty the vlogs and the week in my life would be a lot more fun if i was able to do things and not just be trapped inside the house, but we're working with what we have. <laughs> Another interesting thing I had to do was for bio, and she made us go outside and find anything like nature related that we thought was like kind of cool. So this is what I found. It's actually right by my front porch in this tree. There is a nest. And inside are some eggs. This isn't necessarily work, but I still thought that it was interesting. Um, Mr. Swanson and Archie are doing something in honor of the seniors where we could send in a video clip explaining who we are, uh, favorite memory of senior year, and what we're doing in the future. And you could take a video of yourself saying all this and then send it to them and they're going to put it together in a video. Overall, I'd say that the vlogs are probably my favorite because it gives me time to just like step back and have some fun, videotape a couple things I've been doing, you know, switch it up and make things interesting. But also they kind of make me want to do things so that I can make these a little bit more interesting. Other than that, I'd probably just be sitting in my bed doing nothing. So yeah, that's all I've got and I will see you guys next week. My name is Lainey Berry and the most interesting assignment that was given to me is I would say is probably this vlog um never would I think I'd be recording myself for a grade <laughs> I don't really like to record myself or hear myself talk like many others don't either also this is going to be very helpful for me because I learned that my summer classes at Penn State are now online uh, and of course I took speech So I'm going to have to get used to speaking into a camera, so That's great. So this will be able to help me a lot But other than this a couple teachers have given me some things that are interesting, but not really something like this that I thought I'd be doing <laughs> so I guess that's kind of it. Um, I mean, I have fun doing these vlogs. Um, in the meantime, I hate recording myself when I'm doing it and thinking about recording myself, but in the end, it's, it kind of works out, so. But yeah, that's kind of it. Hi everyone, I'm Olivia Kowalowski, and this is weekly vlog number four for Mr. Swanson's TV2 class. The question for this week is, what is the most interesting lesson, assignment, or activity that you've been given since online school has started, and why do you feel this way? Well, I actually have two. The first would be doing bio online dissections, 
At first, I was like, how are we supposed to do this? Because I can barely understand how to do a dissection in class. But it actually turned out to be pretty interesting. We watched a video on another person dissecting the thing that we are doing for that week. And then we answer questions on it. It's still really hard because like most people are visual learners and they have to see it right in front of their eyes. And on a video, it's kind of hard to see, oh, what thing are they pointing at? Or what even is that? I can't see it. But it makes it, she made it work and it's actually really fun to do and to learn. And she also, if we have the opportunity, she says like, oh, you can go out and get that specimen basically and buy it that we're doing for that week and you can dissect it on your own. And I saw a couple of my classmates were doing that, which is really cool. But personally, I don't have any interest in doing that. We, before this all happened, we dissected an earthworm at school, just a worm or tapeworm, I think it was, and I wanted to vomit. So I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that this time because we're now doing crayfish and I don't even know if I could look at a crayfish alive. I definitely can't look at it dead. So that's a first. The second one would definitely be these vlogs. These vlogs keep me so entertained. I love doing them. Even though I'm just talking to a camera, I think it's so cool to see my classmates, like what they've been up to because you know, I haven't really been in contact with them, so it's cool to see what they're doing. And it's just fun to do. It's fun to be able to show what you're doing and spread positivity and kindness and things like that. And that's something that's so important during these hard times. So I think that's great. So shout out to you, Mr. Swanson. This is the best idea ever. I love this class so much and I'm so sad we can't do it in class, but online. It's been going pretty good and I love doing these and I hope we keep doing them until the end of the year. And I love that they go on television two nights a week after they're posted. So other people, I think it spreads to like five different counties or something like that and over 100,000 people watch it, which is crazy. So they get to see what we're doing too. And it's kind of entertaining to see a teenager vlog their day, maybe. Um. My favorite assignment that I've had so far, I think, is probably for my art class. Um, we just started to do portrait drawings, which I was kind of intimidated by because I've never really been a very good drawer, I guess. I don't really know how to word that. The way that we've gone about doing it has actually made it a lot easier, I think, because a couple weeks ago, like when this all first started, doing basic like shading assignments, and then we kind of worked our way up. We had like how to draw a nose and how to draw eyes and like a side profile and just like basic features. So I think that definitely helped because if you don't learn like the basics behind it, it's definitely a lot harder to replicate something. We picked a reference photo. Um, this is mine, this is the one I'm going off of. Um, this is Saoirse Ronan from Lady Bird. She's in a bunch of other movies, but um, that's the picture that I picked. So right now I am working on my drawing and it looks like she has some major black eyes because we're shading eyes today, but that's step five, I think. And I've been doing this now for probably like two weeks, um, but we're going pretty slow, like step by step. So I think that's why it's taking so long. I'm not completely done with my portrait just yet. Um, this is the most updated version I have of it right now, but um, we're still working on them and I'm not really sure when we're going to be done with them. I think this has been my favorite assignment just because it honestly doesn't even feel like I'm actually doing schoolwork. It's just fun for me to do because I like drawing and that kind of stuff, so it's not even hard for me to want to do it. I will say I think the vlog assignment is probably a very close second but I really like drawing, so this is my favorite. <laughs> also, I thought I would share, my mom got me this shirt. It's in the style of like the Friends logo and it says, seniors, the one where they were quarantined. And the zeros have face masks on, so I thought that was fun. I've been grinding away at some calculus, AP calculus, and anyone who's had that class knows that that's not fun or exciting. Um, as well as physics too, also not fun and exciting. I mean, it's kind of cool learning about magnetism and the way that all works and the math behind it. So 
I guess you could say that's cool. Um, I'm reading a good book, The Kite Runner. That's actually one of the best books I've ever read, to be honest. Not going to lie. Don't want to give Mrs. Ketter all the credit, but it's a really good book. So, yeah. Other than that, I've had to do a couple, couple vlogs. Back to my old ways, Bob vlogs. It was too easy for me back in the day, so... These are like a, like a breeze, but you know, I've, I've been working every day probably, well right now it's early spring, so like 11 hours a day, 12, couple days, making good money, but it's tiring. And uh, I would have to say definitely, hands down, without a doubt, it is this assignment that I am doing right now. Um, no other assignments that we've had so far have been anywhere close to as involving you have to involve yourself so much with this it's fun to just sit and talk about a certain topic and enjoy your time uh no other top or no other classes have given you anything that's like been this enjoyable it's fun to just sit here and be yourself and have fun uh it makes you think a lot you never really get the idea of being in front of a camera especially whenever you take even though you're in a tv class you're never really in the tv class to be in front of the camera it's more or less to be learning about the topics and the different things that you do in TV and then maybe get a little chance to make videos and have fun, but you never really get to be the star and you're your own star in these little vlogs. And it's just enjoyable. I've not had another, I don't look forward to any other assignment in the week than this one. This one's just great. It's a good way to top off my week every week. It's just a fun time. I can't complain about it. Other assignments come close. Uh, I'm in chorus, so that's a great time. We always have fun assignments in there, just singing. You can't go wrong with singing, especially if you're somebody who loves to sing, but nothing will outperform the creativity you have to put behind these things. Uh, it's all around a good time. I thank Mr. Swanson for giving us the opportunity to have such a fun assignment. Uh, he could be a mean teacher and just make us write essay after essay after essay since a TV class is technically an English uh, elective in a sense. So I'm glad he doesn't do that. He just basically throws us in, lets us have fun, do our own little thing. It's just very enjoyable, and I'm glad this is the way that these assignments have been uh, laid out. Um, everything's been unique. Everything's been different. Um, but I would say the most fun activity, the most different activity, would have to be just doing these vlogs. I, you know, I've never been one to be good at... Personally, I don't like the way that I talk into a camera. Um, I like the way that I talk... I feel much more confident public speaking um, in front of actual people, but it's, it's definitely helped me personally um, to be able to gain confidence through talking through a um, camera or phone, because it's a lot different. Even though some would say that it's not, it definitely gives you a different vibe, um, being able to really let your thoughts flow. Um, just, I mean, basically, I'm just talking to myself. I'm staring at myself right now in a dress shirt and sunglasses and a reflection of my phone that who knows how many people are going to watch it, who knows how many people are going to care about it, but all that matters is that, you know, I can really, I can let my thoughts flow and I can let everything, um, I can let everything process through myself. Uh, um, why did I enjoy this? I mean, I pretty much just answered that through just like, I, I think it's re been a really good way of building my own character um through this entire situation i mean obviously everything's different i don't think anyone would argue that um so we all have to try and f try to find different ways different um positives we've all found different negatives um but it's really about how you can take this situation and make a positive out of it and i think that this activity has been a really good way of um, letting me do that, um, especially TV production too, that's not an easy class to teach online, you know, at least the core subjects, you can assign, you know, home, homework, do this assignment that, you know, tests your knowledge of the subject, TV production is a lot, obviously a lot harder to, you know, he, here's your test, um, record a video, here's your test, turn on the lights and analyze the color of them and how they make you feel. You know, that's... Uh, it's a, it's a, definitely a harder class to do, but I think Mr. Swanson has done a really good job at 
um, and adapting to the situation and, like I said, helping me personally find a positive out of it, which is just that it, it's helped me uh, build my character. So, I, I think this was a good way to do it this week, just being able to let my thoughts flow. Every other video I've, I've planned out, but I think... I think that my thoughts this week have just kind of been a lot sh more straightforward. Um, again, thank you, Mr. Swanson, for finding a way to teach this class online and finding a new activity. Even if it's the same activity every week, a different question, and letting me find a different way to record it. So, Thanks, Stephen. Uh, we are going to take a short break, and we'll be back with more of AHS TV's Best in the Nest. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other as just as fair and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear. Though as for that, the passing there had worn them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves no step had trod in black. Oh, I kept the first for another day. Yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood. And I, I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Welcome back to AHS TV's Best of the Nest. My name is Mr. Swanson, and I teach TV video film courses at Armstrong High School, as well as English 12, and students enrolled in TV One, TV Broadcasting, and Video Production were given the topic this week to discuss how they think the world was going to be different after this was all over due to the coronavirus. Let's take a look at what some of them had to say. Hi, Vlog. I'm Andy Camus, and I definitely think that our world is going to have some significant changes after the uh, COVID-19 outbreak. At the top of these changes is going to be a damaged economy. There are going to be a lot of businesses that are most likely not going to be able to reopen. You know, the owners right now, they're, uh, they're still paying bills and they still have dues that need to be made. And the, a lot of the uh, money that they produce while they're open is needed for, to keep them from going under. So they're not making any money right now. And I, I really think that we're going to find out that a lot of businesses are not going to be able to recover. Even when the, uh, our economy opens and our nation starts functioning again, um, I think that these businesses businesses are still going to have a lot of less customers and it might not be enough to save them. That being said, I, I still think that a lot of these places are also going to practice social distancing, um, at least for some time after the outbreak. Uh, this entire pandemic has just shown how unprepared we were for, for it and I think that a lot of places are going to have tighter policies and restrictions that are going to be established to promote health and make sure everyone's okay. I recently saw that airlines are talking about installing wider seats, have shields on either side of them. And now I know some people are going to be happy just to have less cramped seating while flying, but uh, I think a lot 
other organizations like this are going to adapt and they're going to find new methods that um, to promote safety and, and well-being like the airlines are talking about. I also think that people who have not been practicing healthy behaviors and good hygiene uh, really had a wake-up call from this pandemic. Um, and I think they're gonna take their health more seriously after it. I can speak for myself saying that um, I ate a lot of junk food. I wasn't really being that healthy before the pandemic, but um, now I'm, I'm eating healthier meals. I'm drinking plenty of water to stay hydrated. I'm, I'm doing everything I can to, to stay healthy and safe. Uh, I've been following my medication strictly. Uh, I'm a severe, severe asthmatic with immune deficiency. So when my doctors marked me as high risk for the virus, I started taking my health seriously. Before I would miss my uh, inhalers, I wouldn't take them, but now I'm, I'm on it. I'm, I'm staying on the medication, taking my inhalers. People are also going to be a lot more cautious when they go outside and when it comes to spreading germs. Uh, I think that they're going to realize that they shouldn't touch their face when they go out in public. The last change that I think is coming to the post-COVID-19 uh, world is going to be a stronger dilution from the media of what is fake information and what is natural. Ever since the outbreak started, we've all been exposed to a lot of websites or articles that have been giving false information or they're claiming to have factual evidence of the virus, but it ends up being false information from fake sources. Also, some websites are stating that the virus is going to be the end of the world, while others are saying that it's nothing to worry about. And I personally think that both sides are to blame here and um, because I don't think people should be panicking about the virus. That just leads to more chaos. But I also think that they should not be cautious either. Um, it's not a bad thing to be apprehensive and make sure that you don't infect yourself or others. For starters, obviously when this is over, everything is going to be so busy. Like I can just picture it now. Like, I know that if there's, like, lines, they're going to be so long, and people are going to, like, flood the stores, flood, like, anything with, like, public, like, public transportation or activities in the public. Like, literally anything, there's going to be people everywhere. Just because, like, obviously we've been, like, packed in our houses for so long, and people are getting restless to begin with, and I know when this is, like, officially over, like, everyone's going to be everywhere. So, I'm not really looking forward to that. <laughs> Because it's just going to be, like, madness for at least a few months. Um, so, yeah. And also, I think that, like, how we ran out of toilet paper in the beginning of all this, I feel like we're going to have something similar to that when this is over. Because people, once again, are going to be, like, flooding the stores and buying everything. So, I feel like we'll definitely have shortages and stuff like that for a while. Just because, you know, people are crazy. Um... And I also think that when this is over, people are going to still be really cautious. Like, even if there's a cure or whatever and it's, like, really gone, like, permanently, I just feel like people are going to still, like, wear masks and still be really careful, like, other people and, like, stay their distance. Just because, like, now we know, like, hey, like, that happened and it's possible, so just have to be careful. Like, so I don't know. I just feel like now that that happened, like, everyone is going to be, like, a lot more suspicious of others another way i think the world will change when this is over i feel like people are going to learn a big lesson from this if they aren't already um and that is like appreciating everything and like appreciating what you have and just like i don't know being grateful for like the life that you live because obviously since this has happened like everyone's lives have changed so much and like people just didn't realize like how used to a routine that they were like i just think that people didn't realize like how good their life was even if they didn't like it in the moment like compared to now their life was good i just feel like people are going to learn to be a lot more grateful and just learn to like live in the moment more and not to take things for granted um other than that there's obviously other ways the world will change um but those are kind of the main things that i was thinking 
Um, I just think that the world will be a little bit of a better place after this because we've all kind of been through a collective like tragedy. So, you know, now once we get out of it, it's like, I don't know, it's going to be a lot different. All right. And finally, kids enrolled in Intro to TV were asked to show off their pets. Take a look at what one of them has. Hi, everyone. I'm Jessica Kinter. And for this week's vlog, we were asked to do a sort of show and tell with our pets. So for today's video, I will be having 13 special guests with me. I hope you enjoy. Yes, you did hear that right. I do, in fact, have 13 pets. So to start off, I have five hens and two roosters. Definitely a pro, um, getting fresh eggs every single day. But waking up to crowing at 6 in the morning is not one. <laughs> Next up, I have my cats, which to start off is Sadie here. I've had her since she was a kitten, and we rescued her from someone's backyard. And her favorite pastimes are definitely napping and going a little overboard on the cat treats. After her comes the brother and sister duo, Lily and Cody, which we found them on the side of the road left when they were kittens and we have taken them in since. They are definitely super sweet and also quite entertaining sometimes, as you can see. After Lily and Cody is Pip, and as you guessed it, we rescued him when he was a kitten also. After Pip comes Kit, which she is one of the sweetest cats ever. Will definitely come and sit in your lap any time of the day. After Kit comes Penelope, which definitely do not let her cuteness fool you because she is always willing to play and will show her claws. But wait, Penelope is actually Pip and Kit's. <laughs> About three years ago, Kit and Pip had four cute little kittens. And unfortunately, we did have to give some of them away, but the one we did keep was Penelope. Last but not least, we have the only dog of the house, Milo, who, as you can guess, we also took in as a puppy. I would definitely call him the king of the house, but don't be fooled by this, because he is always willing to hop up on the couch with you and get in some cuddles. And, of course, don't forget his toys and stuffed animals. I hope you all enjoyed my pet vlog for today. I'm Jessica Kinter, and thanks for watching. Bye! Thank you, Jessa, and that is all of the time that we have for today's episode. As always, I'd like to thank Chris Barber at WIUP-TV for helping us to continue to air this broadcast during the school closure, and from our virtual nest to your actual nest, from all of us at AHS-TV, we hope you are staying safe and sane, and that you have a good week. See you next time.